Welcome to our commencement. It is my honor and a privilege to be with you today. This is the first of eight separate ceremonies for our class of 2017, with a total of 5,770 graduates. Everyone is very, very special. Today, our focus is on 92 very special graduates of our College of Creative Studies. This college was created for especially gifted students like yourself, full of intellectual curiosity and independent-minded. Your parents can attest to that. <laughs> this year, our campus has a total of 212 region scholars. CCS has 45. So with, with less than 2% of the campus population, CCS has over 20% of our region scholars. And the three quarters of you have plans to go on to graduate school. I would like to thank our outstanding faculty, our extraordinary staff, and our devoted alumni and friends. I would like to take this moment to recognize the passing of Assistant Dean Jo Little for her dedicated service for CCS for four years and 27 years for, at UCSB. I would also like to recognize our interim dean, Kathy Foles, for your totally, total dedication and outstanding leadership. There was not a single Saturday she was not in her dean's office to take good care of our student. And there was not a Sunday she did not sacrifice her time with the family to be in her laboratory. Thank you, Kathy. I would like to especially thank our parents and family members. You have been steadfast in our students' lives, providing love, support, and encouragement. We would like to give all of you our hearty applause. Now to our graduates. Congratulations. <laughs> During your time here, you have demonstrated to all of us just how special you are. We have come to appreciate your curiosity, your devotion, your imagination, and of course, your accomplishments. I have happy memories of the class of 2017. I vividly rem remember when my wife, Dylan, and I, uh, and our deans, uh, and vice chancellors, and staff went on a regional reception tour to recruit some of you, and around the state in the East Coast. And I remember the excitement of freshmen move in weekend. It all seems just like yesterday. Parents and family members, I know how you must be feeling. Proud, yes, happy for sure, nostalgic perhaps, maybe a little relieved. <laughs> we have seen how hard our students have worked. Many of you have worked part-time. Some of you pursued a double majors. You have undertaken original research and a creative projects. You have volunteered your time to help others and you have contributed to the life of our campus and our community in countless ways. My wife and I have enjoyed being your neighbors on campus. We especially appreciate it on weekends, your complimentary music. <laughs> this campus is a place of great intellectual vitality as well as spectacular natural beauty. I know that you graduates will take with you wonderful memories of this place and of this time. There's one thing I want you to always remember that that is how you have helped our campus to become a better place. For that, I say thank you. Talking, talking about a better place, let me mention some of the UC Santa Barbara's accomplishments and recognitions. We are one of only 62 members of the prestigious, over a century old Association of American Universities. This distinction places UC Santa Barbara among the top 
of all universities in the United States and Canada. This year, in its current ranking of 1,374 national universities, U.S. News ranked UC Santa Barbara number eight among all universe, public universities in the country. Also this year, Times Higher Education of London ranked at the top universities around the world for producing Nobel laureates in this century. UC Santa Barbara is number nine in the world. This nine, number nine ranking is about our faculty. What about our graduates? Well, in 2009, our campus was excited to celebrate our very first CCS alumna, Nobel laureate Carol Greider. This is testament to the caliber of undergraduate education and environment at UC Santa Barbara. Maybe we have some more future Nobel laureates among our graduating class today. Our long history of academic excellence is complemented by our unwavering commitment to diversity. Just last month, the New York Times College Access Index ranked all the top colleges doing the most for the American dream. Based on the commitment to economic diversity, UC Santa Barbara ranks number two in the country. The Chronicle for, of Higher Education in April also acknowledged our gender diversity. Looking at data from 2015, they noted that among the 60 U.S. members of the Association of American Universities, UC Santa Barbara hired the highest percentage, the number one highest percentage of women as full-time tenure track faculty for instruction. Not, well, I, th I think that's probably enough rankings. Huh? None, none of these accomplishments would be possible without the dedication of our outstanding faculty and the staff. I also want to acknowledge the hard work and the sacrifices of our students and families. I know what it took to get you where we are today. So today, I would like to say to our graduates, we are here to honor your accomplishments and celebrate your hard-earned degrees. You have met the highest standards of our university. I can tell you with confidence that starting today for the rest of your lives, you will always be proud to say you are a graduate of UC Santa Barbara. So now it is my honor to turn the podium back to Dean Folds. Thank you, Chancellor Yang. I want to express my sincere appreciation on behalf of the college to Chancellor Yang and to his wife, Dilling, for their untiring and extraordinary efforts and for epitomizing the spirit of our campus and community. Um, it's a great role model. Thank you, Chancellor, and thank you, Dilling. It's now my pleasure to introduce members of the administration and the faculty who do so much to make this university and the college the thriving and exciting places that they are. However, I ask that you please hold your applause until the end. Um, on the stage here, we have uh, David Marshall, the Executive Vice Chancellor, David. Leroy Laberman, the Associate Dean of the College of Creative Studies and a faculty member in CCS Chemistry, Biochemistry and LNS Chemistry and Biochemistry. In the audience, we have many members of faculty and administration. We have Deborah Feigenson from CCS Physics and Biomolecular Science and Engineering. Mark Fisher, from he was the Vice Chancellor and Campus Architect Office of the Vice Chancellor for Administrative Services. Josephine Candela, the Vice Chancellor for Research, Maritza Mejia, Associate Director of Orientation Programs, Jeffrey Stoppel, the Interim Co-Dean of Undergraduate Education, Max Weiss, our former CCS Provost from 1984 to 1988, down here in the corner, William Ashby, the former CCS Provost from 1993 to 2006, and Bruce Tiffney, 
former CCS dean from 2006 to 2016, whose shoes I am desperately trying to fill. And dean, uh, former Dean Tiffany is still with us in CCS biology and LNS earth science, and also a wonderful mentor to me. So thank you, Bruce. Uh, we also have Tengiz Babilashvili, CCS physics, LNS physics. Kara Mae Brown, CCS Writing and Literature, LNS Writing Program. Maribel Bueno, CCS Mathematics and LNS Mathematics. Rudy Busto, Director of Graduate Studies and Professor, Department of Religious Studies. Pete Capello, CCS Computing and COE, uh, College of Engineering, Computer Science. Maestro Dan Connolly, CCS Art. Linda Ekstrom, CCS Art. Stu Feinstein, CCS Biology and co-director of the Neuroscience Research Institute and professor of molecular, cellular, and developmental biology. He has a peanut gallery up here. Uh, Satya Guraswamy, CCS Physics and LNS Physics. Jeremy Haladina, CCS Music Composition, LNS Department of Music. Leslie Hogan, CCS Music Composition. Bill Jacob, LNS Math. Uh, and also CCS Mathematics, John Latto, Ecology, Evolution, and Marine Biology, and CCS Biology, Marat Karorman, CCS Computing, uh, David Lowe, CCS Biology, and MCD Biology and LNS, and also Biomolecular Science and Engineering, Hank Pitcher, CCS Art, Harry Reese, CCS Art and LNS Department of Art, we have Tim Sherwood, who's in the Associate Vice Chancellor for Research, Jay Freeman, CCS Computing, Andrew Lanes, the Center for Biological Studies and Ecological Restoration. And if I missed anybody, I am so sorry. You're, you can yell at me afterwards. We have a, a, a living list up here of who walked in amongst the crowd. Now we all know, administrators and faculty alike, and I'm sure the students will attest to this as well, that the people who really make things work on the campus are the staff. And CCS is blessed with a small but dynamic team deserving of the highest praise. And I want to start by um, just acknowledging the people who are here today for the CCS staff. Mr. Frank Bauman down here, Ms. Julia Diamond, Ms. N.J. Kittle, Ms. Vanille Geronimo, who's in the process of coming on board in CCS as Director of Development. Ms. Jen Johansson, the Supreme Commander of this entire event. <laughs> Ms. Marianne Morris, Mr. Will Proctor, and Ms. Sarah Strafone. <laughs> so now, everyone, big round of applause for all those people. And I think those of you who know CCS know that it is very much a team effort. Now, on behalf of today's graduates, I also would like to thank our CCS parents and, of course, CCS donors for their support and generosity over the year. And I also extend my thanks to those of you who wish to remain anonymous for donations to CCS. It's amazing how many of you there are, and I thank you for that. In the current day, your support is invaluable in permitting these extraordinary students to realize their potential. It's been my privilege to serve as the interim dean of CCS this year, and today as we celebrate the accomplishments of the class of 2017 and send them on their way, I have the additional honor of saying just a few brief words. And this is really directed at the students, and so I'll, I'll probably look at them more often than I look at you because it's actually kind of terrifying to look out at you. <laughs> the year went fast. Suddenly we had hours instead of days and now minutes instead of hours. And CCS is about providing opportunities for students and opportunity con to contribute to the living body of creative works and research that the world so desperately needs in order to solve our most serious challenges as human beings and as members of the complex ecosystem that lives on this small blue dot, Earth, in the vastness of space. It's hard to define this college, and that's been part of my job this year, is to try to define CCS. Each student has a unique story and path, but that is part of its beauty and its strength. I believe, though, that there is a common thread that runs through the students here, and I've seen it this year. 
This common thread is exemplified in the words of one of my favorite authors, Rachel Carson, who's the author of Silent Spring. And she writes about the importance of keeping wonder alive. The importance of keeping wonder alive. She says, a child's world is fresh and new and beautiful, full of wonder and excitement. And it is our misfortune that for most of us, that clear-eyed vision, that true instinct for what is beautiful and awe-inspiring is dimmed and even lost before we reach adulthood. However, I believe that you, the CCS students, have retained that sense of wonder, of wanting to make and to discover more, more, more. Carson goes on to wish that each of us would have a sense of wonder so indestructible that it would last throughout life, an unfailing antidote against the boredom and disenchantment of later years, as she puts it, the sterile preoccupation with things that are artificial, the alienation from the sources of our strength. As you remarkable young people commence to the next chapters in your individual stories, it's my hope that UCSB and CCS in particular have provided you with the tools and experiences to keep wonder alive, to achieve your goals and make a difference in the world because it is indeed necessary. I need only to look at you and I know that there is hope for the world. I challenge you to keep the wonder alive in your daily lives, no matter what you do. Do not allow yourself to become alienated from the sources of your strength. Fly away and work hard and work good and make a difference. Imagine the world as it could be and then make it so. But I also ask that you do one more thing and that's to remember that you have been and always will be Okay, no, no, not the Spock quote, Trekkie fans, all right? Actually, I want you to remember that you have been and always will be a part of something good, CCS. This cool little college on a wonderful campus joined in the collective battle against ignorance. Okay, second star to the right and straight on till morning, congratulations. Okay, thank you. I have to keep talking, sorry. <laughs> Each year, the college invites a distinguished alumnus to address the graduating class. And this year, I have the honor and pleasure of introducing Dr. Norman Badler. Norm is Ratcliffe Professor of Computer and Information Science at the University of Pennsylvania. He received his bachelor's degree in CCS mathematics in 1970 his master's in mathematics from the University of Toronto in 1971, and his PhD in computer science also from the University of Toronto in 1975. His research involves developing algorithms and software to acquire, simulate, animate, and control 3D computer graphics, human face, gesture, and locomotion behaviors, both individually and for heterogeneous groups. He supervised or co-supervised 61 PhD students, many of whom have become academics or researchers in the movie, visual effects, and game industries. He's the founding director of the SIG Center for Computer Graphics, the Center for Human Modeling and Simulation, and the VD Center for Digital Visualization at Penn. He served Penn as chair of the Computer and Information Science Department from 1990 to 1994, and as the associate dean of the School of Engineering and Applied Science from 2001 to 2005. And this is the first time he's been back to campus since graduating all the way back in 1970. So welcome back, Norm, and I turn the podium over to you. Well, thank you, Chancellor Yang and Dean Foltz. Thank you to the faculty and staff of the College of Creative Studies for this opportunity. Congratulations to all the graduates. We know you must have worked hard. At least that's what we've been told. It is indeed a pleasure and an honor to return to UCSB and speak to you at this 50th anniversary of the founding of the college. Though it was hardly yesterday, I still remember being in that first class in mathematics led by Professor Max Weiss. There were just four of us in the class. 
Max looked at us and said that he had never done this before, so he wasn't sure what to do. So he pointed to one of us and said, go up to the board. It was quite an interesting road to travel from that point onward. I would love to relate to you all the twisty, turny paths that I took in order to graduate, but suffice to say that the generous requirements of the college allowed me to graduate even though I took a quarter off to work as a computer programmer, a relatively rare skill in the 1960s, at a nascent research lab in, <clears throat> near Mission Santa Barbara. For the curious, I'll refer you to my webpage, which lists a lot of uh, information, but in the interest of time, I'm not gonna belabor that at the moment. So I wanna take a different tack. For five years at the start of this millennium, I was the engineering associate dean at the University of Pennsylvania. I've had to listen to quite a few commencement speeches. One of the seemingly favorite phrases I've heard repeated many times over is, follow your passion. But the missing piece to this advice is always how to find your passion in the first place. If you've already found it, and it seems like many CCS students have, that's truly wonderful and I commend you and hope you can indeed exploit it. But after working with students for over 43 years, more often it seems, People really don't have enough time or experiences to unilaterally discover their elusive but essential passion. So today I thought I would approach this issue through the lens of the key concept in the college's name, creativity. No, I don't want to try to define creativity per se, but I do want to consider how to elicit it. Although my comments aren't intended to be purely autobiographical, I can't help but draw some examples from personal experience. Early in my research career, I started studying facial expressions. That led me to a famous modern psychologist, Paul Ekman. Paul Ekman made many interesting observations on deception and emotional displays, among which his identification of six facial expressions that were uniquely recognizable across many cultures. He called them universal expressions. They were surprise, sadness, disgust, anger, joy, and fear. Of course, there are other emotions, but let me stick to these universals and allow me the liberty to attempt to link these with a the notion of creativity. Consider a situation that causes you to have an emotional reaction. Surprise is a reaction to unmet expectations. It may give you a new view, but of what you already know and not something that came necessarily from within yourself. Sadness, like depression, often suppresses behavior rather than triggering it. Disgust precipitates aversion and withdrawal from a situation. Anger may cause action, but often blinds too, as the old saying goes. Joy is great, but mostly makes you want more of the same. So that leaves fear. And my thesis is that it is fear that often triggers passion and creativity. Passion because the mind and body must become powerful to break the emotion and creative because responsive actions may not come from rote or typical behaviors. Yes, in my personal experience, some of my own cre most creative moments were in fact engendered by fear. Let me give you just a couple of examples. One of the first arose during my junior year in creative studies mathematics. I had married another CCS student, Virginia, right after my sophomore physics final, and I had to work for the summer. I took a job cleaning student apartments in Isla Vista. <laughs> True. Let's just say it was an interesting experience with lifelong memories. <laughs> I have cleaned my lifetime quota of 50 ovens. <laughs> However, when junior, were, year, year, <clears throat> when junior year was over, and I was again faced with a summer to earn a living, I could not stand the thought of cleaning apartments again. In a last ditch attempt to mitigate fear and capitalize on my major, I looked in the yellow pages of the phone book under mathematicians. <laughs> there were two companies listed and I made interview appointments. The second was with Kramer Research as a computer programmer. Wow, something I might be able to do with my education. This turned out to be life-changing in many ways, not the least of which was the mentorship of my benefactor, Henry Kramer, who hired me on the spot, mistakenly thinking I had responded to his UCSB ad for a mathematics grad student. <laughs> Early CCS success. 
One more example happened in the first year I was the Penn Engineering Associate Dean. Let's just say I was not enthusiastic about having to sit through ceremonies such as these, many of them uh, required for the Engineering Dean. So I was scared to death, actually, of having to endure the boredom, the interminable roll call of names, the need to stay awake. During an administrative meeting discussing commencement planning at a bathroom break, the idea came to me about how to alleviate my fears. Each student would have a web page displaying their name, major, and a personal message so that not only me, but everyone in the audience would have something to look at the entire ceremony, including the 99% of the time when their graduate wasn't on stage. This concept was implemented by my younger son, David, who was a student at Penn at the time, and another student. Today, that company called Marching Order run by my son's colleague, is responsible for graduation ceremony displays in many American colleges and universities, all because of fear. <laughs> I recently discovered a relevant quote from the famous physicist Marie Curie, who said, nothing in life is to be feared, it is only to be understood. If I may be presumptuous enough to amend this, I would say, nothing in life is to be feared, it is only to be deemed a challenge to one's ingenuity a call to engage and to change. Perhaps therein lay the keys to passion, the psychology of emotions, the physiology of survival, and the need to take action through whatever talents and skills we need to draw upon. So from my perspective, creativity is often the impassioned response to fear, the need to make a situation meaningfully better for oneself and for others. So what about my passion? I wasn't, it wasn't cleaning student apartments, though I learned a lot about logistics and tackling novel situations. It wasn't even mathematics, where at best I was rather mediocre. And in the memorable words of beloved mathematics mentor Max Weiss, quote, I was the only person he'd met with no ambition, unquote. <laughs> I save things like that. In computer programming, I was good, but there were many who were better than I. But I discovered eventually, as a computer science professor, that my passion was challenge. Challenge that triggered awareness of the unknown, the consequent fear of meeting that challenge, and the passion to bring my skills, my past, and yes, others to address it. So on this occasion of your graduation, your most pressing fear may be about your own future. Seize this opportunity to exercise your creativity rise to whatever challenges present to you, and make that unknown future your passion. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Norm. I now have the pleasure of presenting three students who've been chosen to speak briefly for the College of Creative Studies class of 2017. First is Qi Cheng Zhang, who's receiving his degree in physics. Qi Cheng will graduate with a Bachelor of Science in Physics. He's fascinated by comets and asteroids, basically really big rocks in space, and has been busy figuring out how to keep them from crashing down and spoiling all of our fun here on Earth. Latest word is he hopes it won't be a problem. <laughs> this fall, he will venture 100.0 plus or minus 0 0.1 miles east by south from his present location on this stage to pursue a PhD in planetary science at Caltech. Kiche? Right, my goal here today is to help you answer one simple question. Why are we in here? What's so important about today that I would dedicate my free time in writing this speech to stand up here now and occupy all of yours? <laughs> I, I mean, it's not like I prepare speeches for fun. I mean, I'm a scientist, not a writer. When I'm in front of an audience, I expect to talk about things like Monte Carlo simulations of the end of the world, not about the 10 ways to be happy that I just completely made up. <laughs> and so I won't. Instead, I'm just going to present some evidence, I'll tell a story, then I'll analyze, possibly overanalyze, that story. 
And then if you're still awake, you'll hopefully have heard enough to build your own answer in the traditional CCS way to why you're in here, listening to me babbling on when you could be out there enjoying the sunshine out on the beach, or for that matter, studying for any finals you may still have this week. <laughs> so anyways, the story. The first time I stood in front of an audience like this was actually just over two years ago. Uh, I just started my second year here, in fact, and was wrapping up my uh, first major collaborative research project. One of our collaborators, he'd been planning on uh, presenting our research results at a conference in his hometown, which is a thousand miles from here. And then we discovered they had a, travel, they had a student travel grant program that if I were to be awarded, they'd pay for me to go and present the project myself. So this seemed like a pretty scary proposition. I mean, I'd have to get on a plane for the first time in over a decade, navigate my way through a city I'd never been to, then risk making a fool of myself in front of respected scientists and engineers, working on topics like atmospheric hypervelocity shock aeroplasma processes, which I'm still not sure what that means, but. <laughs> Well, so when my research advisor asked me if I wanted to apply, well, of course I said, sure, why not? <laughs> well, not because I was a brave hero jumping at the opportunity to grow as a researcher as much as I'd like to think I was, but it's more that I didn't think I would get the grant in the first place. I mean, the application explicitly stated that it was intended for graduate students actively contributing this field I'd never even heard of up until this point. <laughs> And so I figured, well, nothing would happen. I could feel satisfied knowing this opportunity never existed. And the end. Well, except I forgot the part where uh, CCS is a graduate school for undergrads, and which I learned a month later was enough for them to award me the grant anyways. <laughs> that or they just had too much money. <laughs> well, bummer, now I would actually have to grow up. That's a familiar feeling, I'm sure, for those of us on the stage. And not just because it's today, but Really, because it's always today. That's a factually true statement, by the way. <laughs> but in CCS, each new today that means a new opportunity to learn, to leave our comfort zone, to grow. Well, really, a mandatory opportunity to grow. And from the, uh, from the looks of it, we've all survived these uh, opportunities. And we've done so together. Each of us may, here may have our own goals we're working to achieve, and those goals may have changed in the past few years we've been here, but we've still been united in our resolve and our efforts to attain them. Which brings me back to the story. Probably guessed by the fact that I'm now up here that my trip went pretty well, and you'd be right. No, not every astronaut in the room was heaping praise on what I had to say, and that's okay. That's what made it valuable as a learning experience. I, however, had the full support of everyone back here in my lab in CCS, many of whom have since shared similar experiences. And so now we arrive here at today, the actual today, that is June 11th, 2017. It's now our last time physically together as a group, no longer as the same babies we started off as just a few years before. And so what happens now as we branch out into our separate adventures? Unfortunately, I'm not from the future, so I can't actually answer that question. However, I can unscientifically speculate after our time together that I think we're ready, beyond ready. I mean, we're an adventurous group here. We're ready to take our next step to challenge each and every one of our goals that we've set out to accomplish, whatever they may be. So now, why are we gathered in here today again? In particular, why are you here? Well, great question. That would be your homework for today. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, our second speaker is Jerry Luo. He will receive his BS in mathematics. Jerry's an aspiring mathematician who's going to be graduating with highest honors. He will be pursuing a master's in mathematics here at UCSB to further strengthen his foundations and get a better sense of his interests before pursuing his PhD. His current research interests include algebra, number theory, and cryptography. 
Outside of mathematics, Jerry is part of Jesus Burgers, a ministry run by his church service or his church, which serves burgers and provides a safe place for people in Isla Vista on Friday nights. Jerry? Before I begin, I would like to make a few acknowledgements. By few, I mean a lot, and by a lot, I mean all of you guys in the audience. I think I can say this on behalf of this year's graduating class. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your support. To all of you who've supported us, physically, psychologically, spiritually, etc., to all the mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, professors and advisors, family and friends, thank you so much for being there for us along the way. You've made a bigger impact than you know. So, let's give you guys a round of applause. I remember coming to CCS with my cohort of about 80 others. Never before have I seen so much passion and excitement to learn and explore in a group of students. We were young and we were passionate, and with some of the craziest dreams, we thought we could take on the world. And then I met some older students. Many of them reminisced about the days when they too had this level of passion and excitement. While some of them certainly upheld this passion that they came, up, came in with, a lot of them didn't. I wondered to myself, why is this? Did they simply let their dreams die? How could someone who had so much passion and excitement just sell for so much less? And then I experienced it for myself. Not once, not twice, but pretty much every quarter I've been around. Towards the second half of each quarter, after countless hours of banging out problem sets, struggling through arguments and concepts that eluded me, and continually trying to piece together ideas to get the bigger picture of what's going on in my classes, I found myself tired and mentally drained. The very concepts and subjects that I was once so excited to learn about felt like a never-ending set of chores that just kept piling up. In a nutshell, I felt burnt out. One of the most important things that I learned in my time here is that while passion and excitement are great for kickstarting something, you need perseverance and endurance to get the job done. While passion, while passion ignites a fire, perseverance is a fuel that sustains it. Because when you're in the middle of the quarter feeling rather drained and with more work to do than you like on your plate, you need more than just a feeling to get you through. You need discipline and determination, which comes from perseverance. I've heard said before that vision gives pain a purpose. Vision allows us to see past what is temporary and into the possibilities that await us on the other side. It's when we have vision that we can look beyond our current circumstances and see the prize waiting for us at the finish line. In particular, vision allows perseverance to come out of our circumstances, be it burnout, setback, or failure, which produces character and ultimately hope within us. It gives us a reason to get back up when we fall, as well as the will to put in the blood, sweat, and tears in furthering us along the path to our goals. So, let's continue to dream big and dream wide. But more importantly, let us remember why we had these dreams in the first place. Let us take hold of the dreams from when, when let us take hold of the dreams and visions from when we were young or younger, and hang on to them when we feel tired, weary, and burnt out. For while our troubles are temporary, the outcome in our lasting growth will far outweigh them all. And while we're at it, let's not forget the friends, classmates, and peers that we've run alongside with. Because I think we can all agree, when we collaborate and work together, the whole of our efforts is greater than the sum of our parts. Or, as the Book of Ecclesiastes puts it, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. So, let us continue to encourage and cheer each other on, especially when we have loads upon loads on our plates. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. It's been an honor and a privilege to be a part of CCS. Now, as we go out in our separate ways, let us not forget the dreams and visions that we came in with, nor the camaraderie that came out in our time here. Thank you.
Finally, we have Corinne Guichard. Corinne is receiving her bachelor's degree in literature with a minor in professional writing. Uh, Corinne wrote her first book when she was eight years old. Now she's graduating with a degree in literature and that minor in professional writing. It's official. She's in the professional editing track and looking ahead. She's a Regents Scholar, a Rob Writing Fellow, and a 4.0 student who procrastinates by training in the circus art of aerial silks. At UCSB, she served as the editor-in-chief of two publications, Sex Info Online, an academic website about sex, health, and relationships that reaches 200 countries, and CCS's own Spectrum Literary Journal. This year, she spearheaded the publication of Spectrum's 60th edition anthology, which, by the way, she reminds me, is available for purchase at the reception outside. <laughs> After graduation, she'll remain in Santa Barbara to continue teaching aerial silks and leading outdoor trips with UCSB adventure programs, all while interning with Tethered by Letters, a publishing company that she desperately hopes will pay her one day. Kareen? The meaning of life is searching for the meaning of life. At least that's what Nietzsche, Darwin, Marx, and Freud seem to think. I know, the meaning of life is searching for the meaning of life. That is so unsatisfying. But we all know nothing satisfies like a Snickers, so you really shouldn't be surprised. I, however, was surprised. When I first came to CCS and found so many people pouring themselves into everything they're doing just for the sake of passion. At CCS, it's pretty common to see people stay up all night, pull their hair out, and live off the free caffeinated tea and oatmeal that's always in the lounge, all in their destinationless search for meaning, which sounds a little depressing. I know, first unsatisfying, now depressing. The speech is really off to a great start. But when I see people in the midst of this meaning seeking, it's inspiring, perplexing, sometimes concerning, but inspiring. I wanna share with you all a little story that to me really embodies this search for meaning that's always happening at CCS. A few weeks ago, I was sitting in the tiny windowless student reading room. I spend most of my nights editing stories and staying up way past everybody's bedtimes, and this was one of those nights. It was around 4 a.m., nearing my lunch break, when another student walked in. He threw off his backpack, didn't say a thing, just turned to this whiteboard that spanned an entire wall, and just mathed. <laughs> For the next 20 minutes, he walked back and forth, scribbling numbers and letters and arrows and melting clocks and a storyboard of a narwhal unicorn turf war and more numbers, and then he just stopped. He took a step back, capped his pen, and walked out. <laughs> he didn't take a picture or write anything down in a notebook. He just had this imaginative, intellectual experience for the sake of itself. CCS is full of people like this, people searching for meaning beyond their homework assignments. We have eight different disciplines, which means eight unique skill sets, unique skill sets with which to search for the meaning of life and never find it. I could go on about all the ways CCS students are doing this, all the incredible, actually, it's peer-reviewed and very credible research and art that's happening at CCS. But half the time, I don't even understand what people are really doing there. Once I passed an art class in the sculpture yard, learning how to make burnt umber egg tempura paint, which I was very disappointed to find out was not a crispy and delicious appetizer. And another time, I overheard the comp sci majors in the computer lab helping each other through for loops and while loops and do while loops and do do loops and fruit loops, and clearly I do not know what I'm talking about. But I am still talking, and you are still listening, I hope, because that's what my major is all about, words. In literature, we read and we write, and we read 
about writing. And we write about reading written works with writing written in the margins by readers reading this writing from way, way long ago, and through all this, we search. With our tiny army of eight literature majors, we try to understand these little bits of meanings that are exposed through human connection and personal trials, and then express them on a piece of paper, which I thought would be straightforward. I'm not deriving any complex formulas or trying to create harmony between a dozen musician, musicians. I'm just reading and writing. But when my teachers started throwing out terms like correlative conjunctions and analapsis and polysyndeton, I thought maybe I had stumbled into a wormhole the physics majors had opened up and was transported to an alternate dimension of complete gibberish. Also, I apologize to any physics majors who actually understand wormholes because that's probably not right. I may not know the intricacies of every CCS discipline, including my own, but I can relate to all these students through this search for something greater. And the best part about searching for an answer we'll never find is that we get to do it with the warmest and most badass community backing us up. I don't know anywhere else on campus where I can knock on the dean's office at 8 p.m. and ask for four reams of paper and a new ink cartridge for our printer, Apricot, because I broke the only two rules. Don't make a book and don't make apricot jam, even though it's delicious. And I doubt there are many other professors on campus who double as peers. Instead of lecturing, they're working with us, guiding us like academic shamans through our four-year search. They rarely give us answers and instead encourage us to ask questions that in themselves reveal meaning. And well, that's the meaning of life. According to me, anyway, I asked Siri and she doesn't know, but she says there's an app for that. <laughs> but there isn't, I checked, and there usually won't be. We'll have to use our creativity and skills as we go forward into the world to solve problems that don't necessarily have straightforward answers. In recent years, 11 glaciers in the Glacier National Park have lost over 50% of their coverage. 10% of the world's population does not have access to clean drinking water. And the iPhone 7 was created without a headphone jack. These are real world issues. And trying to solve them will often be unsatisfying. But I think CCS students are more prepared than most. We spent the last four years searching for fulfillment looking for fulfillment in the search, bursting into classrooms at 4 a.m. to write our thoughts on a wall, even though they're probably gonna be erased the next day. Let's hold on to this desire for meaning. Let's take it with us in all of our future searches. As we prepare to leave our colorful little shelter that is CCS and enter the real world, I wanna say thank you to my peers, the CCS class of 2017, for going on, 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 for going on your own wild searches and in turn, inspiring me to go on mine. Thank you to all the parents, professors, advisors, hairdressers, cooks at Freebirds, Apricot the Printer, everybody who helped make this search possible. And thank you CCS, our home, for always giving us more questions than answers. Thank you. Thank you, Corrine. So thank you, Ki Chang, Jerry, and Corrine. I note that a full recording of this commencement is being made and the preceding addresses will be available online if you wish to revisit them, those three fantastic comments. It's a tradition in the College of Creative Studies during this commencement ceremony to feature work by graduating seniors in music composition. This year, we have two CCS music composition students who have composed pieces for the musical portion of our ceremony, which we are now setting up for. First will be San Francisco Someday, composed by Maddie Marcine, and of it, the composer says, someday I might move to San Francisco, or maybe I won't. It's important to think about the future, but in all honesty, I don't know where life will take me next. Right now, I'm enjoying just living in the present, 
And this piece is actually performed by Maddie on piano. Thank you, Maddie. Our second and final piece, Hitchhiker, was composed by Helen Tanubrata. Helen is a composer who loves the blues and the Wild West. Hitchhiker is a piece about a journey using unconventional means, which is what Helen spent most of her time at CCS doing anyway. Performed by Sarah Bashor on violin, Claire Jarvis on bassoon, and Helen Tanabrata on piano.
Hey, thank you, Sarah, Claire, and Helen. I would, uh, by the way, invite you to see the voices of some of the other students. The Literary Journal Spectrum, again, is um, available in the lobby at the end of the ceremony. And if you happen to come over to the college, uh, check out the Senior Art Show. Many of you were there uh, yesterday afternoon for our reception, but in the art gallery at CCS right now are pieces from the graduating seniors in the art major. And we'll get set up again here. One of the great things about being the dean is that you frequently get to hear the rehearsals and uh, just sort of random piano playing that occurs at any hour in CCS. Okay, it's now my privilege to introduce the undergraduate awards. And I will start by asking Chancellor Yang to return to present the Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Undergraduate Research. Uh, it is my pleasure to present the Chancellor's Awards for Excellence in Undergraduate Research to Daniel Spokoini. Daniel. You stand in front and take some pictures. I will say something nice about you. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel is uh, graduating from CCS with a computer science degree. He has participated in our technology management program as well as the new venture competition, working on fact checking for the web. Together with his friend, he led the a faculty approved the seminar colloquium on a course into natural language processing, machine learning, and deep learning. Daniel has also led two graduate seminars, helped fundraising for our campus first hackathon, hackathon and helped mentor students through our Entrepreneur Association. Uh, Dean Foltz says that Daniel's energy, creativity, perseverance, and a positive attitude shine through in his technical and research capability. Another professor called him the best student I've seen in the past 10 years. Daniel has conducted research on child language acquisition, published several manuscripts, and presented at a conference. He will be begin a PhD program at the Carnegie Mellon University this fall, studying machine learning and natural language processing with the NSF fellowship. Congratulations, Daniel.
Okay, I'm now happy to announce the 10th Annual College of Creative Studies Faculty Executive Committee Commendation of Excellence Award. Whew, that's a mouthful. This honor is awarded to an exceptional student or students in order to recognize their truly outstanding performance in their overall intellectual and creative endeavors. A graduating senior in CCS must be nominated by two or more CCS faculty and agreed upon by the members of the CCS Faculty Executive Committee. This year, we will be recognizing four students. It gives me great pleasure to convey this year's awards to these students. And students, as I read your names, please come forward. The first is Morgan Brubaker, BS Physics. Morgan, will you please come to the podium? Morgan's, Morgan's research advisor credits him entirely for work that is in the process of becoming a publication. He writes, I want to note especially that no graduate student or postdoc is involved with the project, and for the last 18 months, no other undergraduates either. This means that Morgan has had to display independence and motivation way beyond what is typically expected of an undergraduate. His mentor adds, when you talk to him for just a little while, it's easy to see that he possesses unusual clarity of thought and a strong moral character. Morgan's faculty advisor describes him as someone with high standards when it comes to understanding. When logical connections are missing, you can see it on his face, and as you further explain a concept, you can watch the satisfaction grow. The only problem he has had no solution for, since there was no logic or mathematical formula to apply, was whether to choose Harvard, MIT, or Stanford. <laughs> Morgan will be attending Stanford in the fall. Congratulations to Morgan. <laughs> Our next recipient is Sammy Guo, who's receiving a BS in computer science. When describing him, both Sammy's research advisor and faculty advisor are tangibly excited by the work he's doing and about his future. Of his undergraduate accomplishments, his research advisor writes, his presentations in my reading group are topped only by one of my most senior PhD students. He's co-author on a paper in a flagship publication venue with a 16% acceptance rate and will be first author on a paper that, he, that I believe will be a top contribution in the field. Sammy is one of the most promising undergraduates I've ever had the opportunity to work with in my 14 years as a professor. And he goes on to say, I believe he's already operating at the level of an advanced PhD student. I find his solutions to problems to be a wonderful mix of creative, insightful, and practical. And I have seen that he is capable of leading research work of the caliber expected from our most prestigious venues. Sammy will be entering the industry while he navigates his path toward graduate school. Congratulations, Sammy. Our next recipient is Amy Fukumoto Peterson, who's receiving her degree in biology. And Amy, will you please come to the podium? Amy's research advisor describes her as a tireless contributor to her lab and as the very best of all undergraduates with whom she has worked in her 30 years of science. To quote, Amy contributes ideas and insights in addition to data, which is quite remarkable for an undergraduate. She's been interviewing all over the country for PhD programs, and my colleagues at other universities are lobbying me to convince her to accept their offer. Her faculty advisor notes that she carries herself with a kind, generous, and mature manner and has the intellectual and personal maturity to excel at a career in research. Amy has just published work in the journal Nature Communications and will be entering the PhD program in the Biochemistry Cell and Molecular Biology uh, venue at Johns Hopkins University in the fall. Congratulations to Amy. Finally, Ki Cheng Zhang, who you've already met, BS in physics. <laughs> Ki 
Ki Chang joined a research group in the beginning of his first year, and his research advisor writes that while he did have some help from others on our team at the very beginning, he then took the lead within a week, literally, and debugged the entire project, finding a number of serious errors that others had not seen. He's the kind of person I love to work with as I know he will do things right. I wish all my students were like him. Ki Chang's faculty advisor notes that he's a stellar, and there was a little ha-ha in there, combination of academic and research excellence with impressive accomplishments, including first author on two publications and presentations at academic conferences in his subfield. And you heard about one of those. Not as a student, but as a researcher. To quote, Ki Chang's love of physics and research is so strong that he requires no time management. He just lives in physics. His childhood hobby has become his research passion, which I find just amazing and love. Ki Chang will be attending Caltech in the fall for a PhD in planetary science. Congratulations to Ki Chang. Finally, we have the CCS Student Service Award, which recognizes outstanding contributions by a graduating senior to the intellectual and social functions of the college. Such activities might include participation in student recruitment activity, participation in CCS student groups, or assistance to college functions, to name just a few. This is only the fifth time a CCS Student Service Award has been given, and it goes to Gabby Nizam. Gabby's receiving her degree in biology in three years. Yes, three years. She's been a leader in seeking opportunities to improve student life. She helped to found the CCS Student Council, a group with representatives from each major in CCS, and created with the primary missions of developing community through events and advocating for resources for students. She served on the council for the two years it's existed. She has helped represent the college formally at Spring Insight and regional receptions, and informally over the summer, popping in to help with orientation sessions despite not being a paid member. She's even been spotted in the evening or on a Saturday in the CCS building talking to a family that wandered by. Despite her high level of involvement in academics and research, Gabby's enthusiasm for learning, for mentoring, and for CCS was generously shared and will continue to be felt even in her absence. I can personally say I will very much, much miss her presence. Gabby will be taking a gap year before pursuing her graduate studies. Please join me in congratulating Gabby. So at this point, we're getting to the, the place you've all been waiting for, and I'm going to turn the podium back over to the chancellor. And now, the moment we are waiting for, the presentation for degrees. The degrees conferred by the University of California attest to scholastic achievement and represent the university's fulfillment of its, of its primary responsibility. In the College of Creative Studies, we award the Bachelor of Arts and the Bachelor of Science degrees. Will the candidates for the degrees please rise By virtue of the authority vested in me by the regents of the University of California, I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Science as appropriate. Will each of the candidates please come forward by rows when Dean Foltz calls your name? Please be seated.
we're starting with you. Okay, our first graduate is Anna Sophia Eisman in mathematics, member of STEAM and Leeds, and her postgraduate plans working for the Fund for the Public Interest. Kareen Alpers, literature, postgrad plan, working as associate product manager at IBM. Congratulations. <laughs> Samantha Mutchler, biology, works, will work as an ecologist for the Navy and National Park Service in San Diego, California. Jordan Shelby, literature, minor in professional writing. Congratulations. <laughs> Amanda Tokuyama, biology, postgraduate plan, working for the National Park Service as a wildlife intern on the Santa Monica Mountains Urban Coyote Project. Rachel Bromberg, biology, will work at the Foothill Pet Hospital, applying to veterinary school in September 2017. <laughs> Gary Chainke, biology, UC Lead Scholar. Amy Fukumoto-Peterson, biology, CCS SURF recipient, co-author on a publication, will attend Johns Hopkins University for her PhD in the fall. Blake. Blake Toro, biology with a minor in science and mathematics education, was a member of the California Alliance for Minority Participation in Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math Research, Delta Tau Delta Fraternity Kirshner Scholar, and will be working as a full-time biology instructor at San Bernito High School in Hollister, California. Robin Allison, Mathematics, will pursue a PhD at the University of Oregon, Eugene, for graduate school. Way to go. Thank you. Michael Balsowitz, Physics, Michigan State University, for grad school. Daniel Bachter, Biology has two publications under review and one already published. Will attend medical school after taking a year off. <laughs> Abigail Brenneman, literature with a minor in education and a minor in German studies, Stanford, edu Stanford teacher education program to pursue her masters. Morgan Brubaker, Physics, has a publication in Applied Physics Letters, a CCS SURF recipient, Stanford for graduate school. <laughs> Jessica Bullington, Biology, Benson Fellowship for Research in Aquatic Biology, honorable mention for the NSF Foundation, or the NSF Fellowship Program, will attend the University of Hawaii School of Ocean and Earth Science and Technology. Alexander Koshan, physics, CCS SURF recipient, will attend the University of California, San Diego for graduate school. <laughs> Zach, Co Zach Kogan, biology, CCS SURF recipient, will work for Climate Reality, which is a nonprofit organization. We need you. <laughs> Griffin Davis, BA in literature, minor in linguistics, Editor-in-Chief at Gaucho Marx Magazine, and he also read a few books. <laughs> I love that. Kevin Dervishi, Biology, Goldwater Scholar, first place winner at UCSB's Undergraduate Research Slam, 
will attend the PhD program at Harvard Medical School in Biological and Biomedical Sciences this fall. Jacqueline Eisdorfer, biology, postgraduate plan, Temple University as a PhD candidate in biomedical engineering and neurosciences. This one. Aviv Albag, physics, PhD in aerospace engineering at Stanford University this fall. Maxwell Granger, physics, CCS SURF recipient, will attend the University of Wisconsin in Madison for a PhD in physics. <laughs> Corinne Gachard, BA in literature, minor in professional writing, was a co-editor of the 60th edition of the journal Spectrum. Again, available for purchase outside. She really wants to sell these. <laughs> Sammy Guo, BS in Computer Science. Zhao Jing Guo, BS in Mathematics, CCS SURF recipient, will attend the PhD program in Mathematics at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. John Hare, Physics, Worcester Fellowship, CCS SURF recipient, will be in the Physics Graduate Program at Johns Hopkins University this fall. Ben Hasland Gorley, Biology, served on the board of a local nonprofit called Gateway Educational Services for underrepresented populations with after school tutoring. Genetics and Organic Chemistry as a CLAS tutor here on campus, and will be continuing his research that he started in the laboratory of Dr. Jamie Marth here on campus. Yeah. Zach Helfenstein, Computer Science, going straight to work at Google as a software development engineer. Nick Higdon, chemistry, biochemistry, was an Amgen scholar and will be in Caltech's PhD program this fall. <laughs> Sam Holton, chemistry, biochemistry, graduate school after taking a year off. <laughs> David Hyon, biology, co-author on a publication and a recipient of a Worcester Research Award. <laughs> Canel Ermus, literature with a minor in theater, will be doing backstage theater work and playwriting. <laughs> Zachary Johnson, physics, University of Michigan Ann Arbor for grad school. Hiba Kaleen, literature with a minor in education, will be um, working towards a physician's assistant master's at USC. Congratulations. <laughs> Coulter Keeler, chemistry biochemistry, medical school after taking a year off. Annette Kleinman, chemistry biochemistry, CCS SURF recipient, will be attending the Virginia Commonwealth University School of Medicine. Congratulations. Jason Lipton, chemistry biochemistry, future leaders in advanced materials program, will be attending the PhD program in chemical engineering at Yale. Congratulations. Sherry Lowe, mathematics, will be in the master's program here at UCSB this fall. <laughs> Li Hu Mao, mathematics, will be attending UCLA in a master's of applied statistics program. 
Maddie Marcin, Music Composition, Corwin Award recipient from 2014 to 2016. Congratulations. <laughs> Michael Mazur, Chemistry and Biochemistry, NSF Graduate Research Fellowship, Caltech Chemistry Institute Fellowship, and will be attending the PhD program at Caltech this fall. Emma Mall, Biology, CCS SURF recipient, research experience for undergraduate grant from the National Science Foundation, and will be attending graduate school after taking a year off. <laughs> Mina Morali, Biology, graduate school after taking a year off. Gabby Nezum, Biology, Worcester Award Fellowship, CCS Student Council Biology Rep, and will also be attending graduate school after taking a year off. <laughs> Reed Nakamoto, Biology, will be continuing work that he started here in the Simpson Lab and then on to graduate school. <laughs> David Nakazono, Physics, but also music on the trumpet. We'll be attending the Chicago College of Performing Arts at Roosevelt University, pursuing a Master's of Music in Orchestral Studies. Congratulations. Jason Nomberg, Biology, will be uh, attending the PhD program at Harvard University in Virology. Riley Peterson, Physics, CCS SURF recipient, graduate school after that gap year. Thank you. Jasmine Pratt, Biology with a minor in professional writing. <laughs> a Noah Hauling Scholar has been, uh, attended the Woods Hole Biological Discovery, REU and will be attending the Washington State University for Graduate School in the Washington Stormwater Center. Congratulations. Duncan Proctor, Biology. Duncan co-authored two publications and will be pursuing his PhD here at UCSB in the Molecular, Cellular, and Developmental Biology Department. Christopher Reitz will be pursuing a PhD in physics at the University of Colorado Boulder, physics major. Eric Rice, mathematics, UCSB Regents Scholar, will pursue an MA, an MA in applied math at UC San Diego. E. Chandler Richards, Degree in Chemistry and Biochemistry. Congratulations. Noah Rubin, Biology, CCS SURF recipient. We working as a physics tutor in CLAS and then on to graduate school after taking a year off. April Savage, Biology, co-author on two publications, was an undergraduate research assistant in the Feinstein Lab for four years, and will be working at a biotech company during her gap year before entering graduate school. <laughs> Adam Schmidt, Computer Science, postgrad plans are to remain at UCSB for a master's in computer science. Christopher Sersel, Physics, will spend a year as a mechanical engineer at the JPL before pursuing a PhD in aerospace or mechanical engineering. <laughs> Landon Settle, Mathematics, PhD program at Carnegie Mellon University. Yu Kang Shen, Mathematics, University of Illinois for a Master's in Computer Science. Yeah. 
Rachel Sowa, computer science, minor in German, minor in music, was a, was a member of the UCSB Education Abroad Program Gaucho Scholarship, will be working in software engineering for at least a year and then applying to graduate programs in media, arts, and technology. Daniel Spicoini, Computer Science, National Science Foundation Fellowship, taught two CCS colloquiums and will be attending graduate school at Carnegie Mellon University. <laughs> Amy Tan, BA in Book Arts and Sociology, received the Pat Mahoney Scholarship in the GAPA Gaysian Gay Asian Pacific Alliance Scholarship that highlighted the work as co-founder of the first ever queer art collective. Congratulations. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Helen Tanubrata, BA in music composition, will attend the San Francisco Conservatory of Music. Ariel Thielander, chemistry biochemistry with a minor in Spanish. John Thomason, computer science, co-authored a publication and will be completing the five-year BSMS program at UC Santa Barbara. Dina Lisa Tilcock, BA in Literature, was a Regents Scholar, has two short stories published in the journal in Mount Diablo Shadow, was also a Rob Fellow, and the managing editor of Spectrum, which, by the way, is available in the lobby. <laughs> well done. Well done. Kristen Ann Shea, Biology, a cappella singer and spoken word poet co-author on two publications and received the Cooperative International Science and Engineering Internship in Sweden. <laughs> Isaac Tuzinski, biology, a Noah Halling scholar, will attend graduate school after taking a gap year. Brittany Wilson Mifsud in biology, graduate school after taking that gap year. <laughs> Kayla Wright, math, will pursue a master's at UCSB and was also a CCS surf recipient. Da Wu Sheng, Mathematics. Ji Yan, Mathematics, will be attending the New York University Master's Program in Financial Engineering. Congratulations. Zihan Yi, bath Mathematics, will pr be pursuing a Master's in Statistics at Columbia University. Allison Young, wow, BA in art, painting, BA in psychology, and a minor in art history. Take a day off. <laughs> Ki Chang Zhang, physics, was a Goldwater scholar, and as you've heard, will be at Caltech pursuing his PhD in planetary science. Samuel Aronson, physics, will work at the Los Alamos National Lab over the summer and then graduate school after taking a year off. Congratulations. Catherine Duncan, biology. <laughs> Jacob Fahman, physics. George Fuller, physics. Matthew Maddeny, Biology, Dean's Honors in LNS. Congratulations. Hunter Nicholson, Physics, 
will continue research that he started here on campus and then is applying to the spring 2000 master's programs for electrical and computer engineering. Thank you. Tyler Postal, physics, CCS surf recipient, MRL RISE internship, and will continuing the research that he started here on campus. <laughs> Rose Spanbach, BA in art, painting, recipient of the Wendy Finkel Memorial Grant. Rose. <laughs> Jack Betts, BA in literature, and a BS in environmental studies. Christian Daly, BS in Computer Science, will attend graduate school in 2017. <laughs> Taylor Graham Howard, BA in Book Arts, will continue research in painting in papermaking and primarily at the Penland's Haystack School of Crafts. Dustin Harris, chemistry and biochemistry. Dustin. Addison Gerlo, music composition. Addison. Shane Masuda, BS in computing with a minor in physics. Plans to pursue a master's in computer science at UCSB. Brunel Odegaard in physics was a CCS surf recipient and plans to attend graduate school after taking a gap year. <laughs> Nicholas Dibble Khan in mathematics, VP of Indus. All right. Give everyone a round of applause. I believe that is the end of our ceremony. Yeah? <laughs> Congratulations again to you all. We will continue our celebrations. We have a reception just outside the door here. Please stay and enjoy the moment. Thank you again, congratulations. Yeah.